Well, and welcome back to Dial H for Euroclix. This is episode 322. This episode, we're taking a trip down to the corner. We're going to go digging for some hidden gems. We have listener questions from TMU and Malcolm Rush, and we're going to be talking about some ooey gooey, super cool map related news. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, is my nemesis, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ha <laughs> ha, it's a good thing that I just edited out that last three minutes of rant that I went on because no one would have appreciated it. Ah, uh, the power of technology. That's what I've been thinking about. Yeah, I've got no idea what that could possibly reference. Anyways, let's go ahead and start off with what made us happy this week. Simeon. All right, what made me happy this week was... Uh, I got quarantined by order of my business. They sent me home early. They made me stay there for days while I was getting paid. So they're nice enough to do that. That was pretty sweet. Um, Basically, got a five-day weekend. Had to get tested. Had to send them my results. Um, uh, Break some HIPAA protocol here and tell you all I'm a negative person overall. Um... in my results, in my attitude, in my emotions, just all negatives, which can occasionally be a good thing. So there's that. That made me happy. Um, okay. Uh, glad to know that made you happy, uh, Simeon. Yeah. Fantastic. I could well, spit in your eye and you'd be f- just fine, Calder. <laughs> oh, just like okay. a prodigal well, son would spit. No, give me a, give me a, give me a, give me oh, I'm sorry. That was edited out. Sorry. It was edited out. They don't get the reference. They don't understand what was what's happening. And they're like, no, wait, I do get the reference. You can edit it out. Uh, well, either way, whichever one works. Who knows? I, however, took a trip. And let's see if you guys can figure out where I took the trip. Couldn't pick a better time to start in life. It ain't too early and it ain't too late. Starting as a farmer with a brand new wife. Soon to be living in a brand new state. Brand new state. Gonna treat you great. Gonna give you barley, carrots and potatoes. Pasture for the cattle, spinach and tomatoes. Flowers on the prairie where the June bugs zoom. Plenty of air and plenty of room. Plenty of room to swing a rope. Plenty of heart and plenty of hope. Oh! Oklahoma, where the wind keeps sweeping down the plain, this and the wave in New York National Anthem. Feet, the wind comes right behind the rain. Oh, Oklahoma! All right. Is that from the great city of Oklahoma, New York? That is from yes, Oklahoma, New York. You are correct, Simeon. Ah, Thank you. The Dang, state's so nice correct. they named it twice. It is correct, Oklahoma, Thank New you. York. <laughs> No, I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the fun little place of Dice Addiction for state tournaments. Spoiler alert, I am not your Oklahoma state champion. I drove down with pretty cool guys, uh, our best podcast supporters at the, uh, at, for our show, which is actually yeah. Lucas, Lucas, Tom Van Holland, Ola Joey Four Names, and Kevin Nelson of Phoenix Nest fame. Uh, Kevin, of course, being famous for being a Phoenix Nice. Lucas, uh, never heard of her before, but I am sure glad she supports the show. Um, that was almost a little tongue twister to say. Uh, we drove down, had some fun stops along the way. I got to be in a you know, car full of Clicks players, and we got to just talk, uh, talk about Hero Clicks life, whatever. It was just, they're some of my best friends. It was good to hang out with them again, good to go on road trips. They're most of the road trip crew. A few of the guys didn't join us, but that's okay. Um, you know, if it works out, it works out. Um, let's just go ahead. I'm going to get into the tournament. But what really made me happy was uh, hanging out with the guys, hanging out, seeing people that I normally only see once a year, actually. So uh, Don Riggin Jr. was there. Who, who calls, calls him Don? DJ <laughs> DJ Riggin was there. Uh, Caleb Reddick was there. Uh, Louis, Louis Reyes was there. And uh, a few other people, Justin, a few really cool guys. Listener, Scott from the Gulf Coast, Mississippi team. They had a really sweet t-shirts. 
and a few other people that I met. Hostway, just a lot of cool guys. A lot of cool guys. Can't do enough shout outs to all the nice folks that show up. Of course, uh, Edward, Edward Ola Shelley, he was there too. He's a pretty great guy. He actually bought us dinner. Um, you know, that's to say you got to buy your dinner first. So I really appreciated that. That was real nice of him. That was a bad connotation there. He uh, he was buying dinner for his teammates, and I just happened to be there, which is pretty sweet. So that was great. And I played Dr. Fantastic with two Jason Wingards, Magneto, 25-point Colossal Retaliator Magneto, the Time Gem for some of that sweet, sweet probability control, and uh, the plus 10 trait on Dr. Fantastic, which is whenever any friendly character is started by Perplex, Outwit, or Probability Control, I just make a Doombot. Anytime. You prob my attack? Doombot. You outwit my power? Doombot. Perplex me down? Guess what? Doombot. Cool. <laughs> I really, I really enjoy it. It's a ruler theme team. Ruler theme team. The last five points was a little, little map bonus I like to call, I keep these trains running. Mm. They, run. no, they didn't, they, they didn't hit a one. single person. Uh, they, don't worry, they didn't hit a single person all day. I lost Matt most of the time. Uh, first game up against Gavin from the What Time Is It? It's Time to Get Ill. What Time Is It? It's Time to Get Ill. It actually said it's clobbering time on the back of their t shirts, but I, I kept thinking of uh, It's Time to Get Ill. Anyways, and he was playing a Justice League team. I lost that one. I, I think I learning how to play this team the night before in the hotel room at 12 a.m. was not enough practice to prepare me for the day. Uh, despite the fact that I had played double Jason before. Uh, but that was in a different team in a different meta with uh, ID cards and all this other stuff, right? So when I won that, when I <laughs> won that WKO earlier this year against a certain <laughs> scumbag, Simeon Bruce, um, <laughs> oh, it was yes. a little different. Ran it to a different time, time, as I remember. Uh, yes. uh, well, <laughs> Whose fault is that? Certainly not me. Not the guy who has doesn't have you know fifteen characters on the board that he's got to worry about freaking placing them in giant garbage. Mm. To be fair, it ended on your turn. Uh, last action was called when I uh, when I said, "All right, it's your turn." And then they called it, and you didn't declare anything. Uh, so it's kind of your I fault. Really. I don't think it did. I, I think it's recorded, uh, and I think uh, you were determining uh, whether. Know. You were gonna do anything, and then you were like, "Jason could call in an ID card." Uh, what ID cards do I have? Uh, you and know then, what? I don't, really was... know. I don't really know. I don't know. I'll okay. watch it's it lost tonight the and let you know. Who, yeah. who knows? Who knows what happened to that game? There is no video. I'm texting Happy Little Hero Clicks right now. It's on delete that video off his YouTube channel. It's not getting him any more revenue, anyways. He can go ahead and delete it. He doesn't need that one. He can forget about it. Anyways, uh, lost the first game. Only scored fifty points. Uh, I chose targets wrong. It just a lot of inexperience was showing on my part. Uh, next game, I played against Hulk, Mortal Hulk, Black Widow, and Captain Marvel. Once again, lost map. Uh, indoor maps aren't great for Jason. I kind of wasted a pog to destroy a wall so I could get to Black Widow, forgetting, of course, that she has stealth because she's, you know, Black Widow. Um, and every Black Widow should pretty much have stealth. So I don't know why I, for some reason, thought, yeah, I'll make a hindering marker and I'll shoot her. Yeah, no. Anyways. Uh, but the Franklins were great. The Franklins were really cool. That game is a little closer, but I was only able to kill... Uh, what's her face? Captain Marvel. I'm just now realizing that I rotated Hulk once, and I should have gotten 25 points, so I should have scored uh, not 95 points, but uh, 125. Now, that is important for later. I may have just shortchanged myself realizing this now, and it kind of hurts the innards of my soul, as we'll get to. So right now, I'm I'm 0-2. I've got two losses. I'm very much in the loser's bracket of the tournament. But your boy came out on top. The next game, I played against a Triple H, Medusa, Steve Rogers, Ooh. Voyager team. Little Simeon, Simeon's a little aware of this. He kind yeah, of knows what's like going that. on. In that empower, letting those hairs swing for six. Well... It ended up the Jasons just kind of had the reach on this one, making Franklin pulse waving, getting rid of all of their hairs, doing my double mind controls. This was the first time of the day where since I won map, I was able to take them to the trains and I have just four lines of fire, lines of sight. That's what I need really uh, for Jason Wingard and everything to really work the way I want him to. Uh, so that game I won. I did lose a Jason, a little, a little frivolous with my Jasons and I let them die. I need, I need to not do that, but that's just the way it is. What was actually kind of cool is I had one pog left to make with Jason on that team. And it was just the Steve Rogers, and I'd already made him living legend. And a real cheeky thing I decided to do was make a robot dupe and make it copy Steve Rogers. 
and then I had it shoot Steve Rogers. So it was a little uh, stop hitting yourself action. I thought that was a little cheeky. I thought that was fun. I thought it was fun. Anyways, next game, uh, double Captain Marvel and Hulk. Now, if you're paying attention, I've already lost against a team slightly similar, and uh, Marvel and Hulks don't treat your boy well. Well, once I told this guy, by the way, this is my, this is my favorite game of the day. Phil was awesome. He was hilarious to play with, play against. And my goodness, did we just have a fun game. He found when he read that when you target me with prop, plex or outweigh it, I make a doom bot. It was like, let's see how many we can get on the board. And I was, <laughs> by the way, I had, 12, I had 12 doom bots with me. I was just carrying around 12. And up to this point, max amount of doom bots I ever had on the field was like three. Okay. Like brought out just and, and KO. Like I only ever brought out three, most in one game. In this game, we went ahead, tripled that number. I brought out nine Doombots. I had nine Doombots on the board by the end of this game. It was awesome. I loved it because they aren't sidelined. They're generated. So it's like making a pog. They don't take up sideline space. It's awesome. So uh, with that, though, I actually was able to kill both Captain Marvels, uh, kill the Hulk. It was a tough game, though. Make, I made Chaos Pogs right away. I did my TKs. I did my mind controls on the Captain Marvels. Um, yeah, I was able to kind of, you know, outwit Hulk's charge, you know, mess with him a little bit, stuff like that. So we were able to get it. He actually, every time he would flurry, he would target a Franklin, right? A Franklin Galactus first, who has a 20 defense with Impervious. He would hit it. I would always miss Impervious. And for his blades roll, he'd roll like a five or six, killing Galactus. And I was like, ah, oh, man. And he killed both Galactuses that way with the little chewy pog, which just offended me that his little cat pog was killing my Franklin Pog when he made his super senses when Franklin tried to punch the cat a turn earlier. I cut deep. I cut real deep. And uh, that actually didn't happen. Uh, I always use Franklin for shots against Captain Marvel or whatever. So I really never attacked the cat. <laughs> anyways, I don't know why I said that. I'm like, that that didn't happen. Uh, anyways. Yeah, yeah, like, chewy. With, the first, with the first flurry, he would kill Franklin. Then he's like, I guess I'll attack that Doombot. And he'd roll like a one or a two on Blades. And I was like, yeah, the Doombot's toughness reduces it. Great. And awesome. Wow. Yeah. I was like, this sucks. And he's like, yeah, I really wanted those points. And I was like, mm. if I could get 15 points for a Doombot or get Franklin Galactus off the board, I think I'd rather have Franklin Galactus off the board. But it was a really fun game. Uh, I ended up winning it. So I had two 300 point wins and then uh, a 50 point win and a, no, sorry, a 50 point loss, a 95 point loss, actually, which should have been a 120 point loss. And guess what place your boy went home, Simeon? Uh, I'm going to say ninth. Two and two. That is correct. I went home ninth place, missing top eight cut. There were already two. <laughs> there were already three two oh, and two. No. Now I really, really want to know who was above me and how many points they got. So the guy above him had 920 points, which means the window for that dude above me isn't much higher than where I was at with my 700 and no, I got. Oh, he had eight hundred and twenty points. That's right. So I had seven hundred and forty-five, which means that dude with the eight twenty, the guy below him who also made top cut had under eight twenty, which means your boy might have made top cut. I accidentally shortchanged myself because we forgot to count that I rolled Hulk's dial once. Which, uh, just realizing that now that I'm saying it really hurts that I finished the sixteen-hour drive there and back uh, to finally get back home. And uh, I am crying. You can't see I it, but it I am shedding. Just goes to show you that, that uh, people that play Immortal <laughs> Hulk can't be trusted. They're I agree. They're not good people. They uh, they tend to cheat what? to win and a, a little yeah, Eddie here's, Guerrero here's what, style. Here's what uh, here's what cut me the most is when it came time to choose my my primes from Earth X, whatever. So they had all the guys that were in top eight choose the ones they would choose. That way, they're set aside, and then anyone that didn't make top eight doesn't have to wait until they're done. So I went ahead, and I was getting ready. He did all top eight, so I was like, oh, he might call my name uh, you know, next, or maybe the, the one after next, because I was like, I don't know. I feel like he got sort of enough points in 2-2. Two, two, you know, maybe I was hoping I would make top eight cut. He says some name, and I'm like, huh? Can you say that again? He says, we got a caddler here. Is there a caddler? <laughs> As if to drive the stake. Deeper into my heart. <laughs> I was like, you want to switch that D and L around? It's like, we got a cold here. And two zigzags what? driving my Caddler around. Caddler. Got that, got that 85 Caddler rack. 
just so I was like, big old yeah, rings on anyway. it. <laughs> My cat's um, <laughs> So that's Calder. So you didn't text her, you called her, and he said, that's cute. Pick your figures. And I was like, mm. okay. <laughs> Uh, I took my little, took my Black Adam Prime, took my little Miles Morales Prime, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. good luck, top eight, okay, see you later, bye, okay. Um, and then, but the guys I drove with, and this is, I'm just proud, this is makes me, uh, South Dakota boy, it makes me proud, uh, Kevin and Lucas uh, actually got first and second, so Lucas won, and Kevin got second place, and oddly enough, they're playing the same team. Yeah, the the Hulk, Ace, Hulk uh, Bills, other garbage. Batman, Tri-Sentinel, uh, Phoenix, and Magneto. Now, here's the cool thing. Obviously, we know Lucas uh, has played this team a lot. Kevin is a really, really good player. Obviously, he got second, you know? So, I think Kevin went 3-1 uh, and one in Swiss, right? And then Lucas went undefeated. And then whatever, they ended up, obviously... So, Kevin only had one loss that day. I think I believe it was to Edward Sheldon, which is kind of funny. And then, against Lucas... So obviously Kevin's a great player because he made it all the way through top eight, you know, and he beat an Exodus team, which uh, really hurts Hulk, obviously. Um, I'm not going to explain what Exodus does. I'm, I'm already talking about the state's trip too long. Um, but their game took 15 minutes. Not wild. I mean, are you there? Yeah. yeah the so it took, took 15, 15 minutes? minutes? 15 minutes. Yeah. Mortal Hulk. That means Immortal Hulk was KO'd in 15 minutes. Oh. Here's the thing. I thought you said yeah. Immortal Hulk beat Exodus in 15 minutes. And I was like, yeah, charge. No, no, no. Versus Kevin. Their game, 15 minutes. That is wow. That shows that, number one, two very good players that know their team. Number one, Lucas knows the team very well. Kevin is insanely good. So he knows the team pretty well. This is one of the, I think it's, I don't know if it's the first time he's played it or not. I thought it was. But he played it all day, and obviously he was playing it well. And it just goes to show that if you don't um, call for time, don't do anything else, and you just play your team the you know as fast as you can, and like make the decisions correctly and stuff, it can be over in 15 minutes. Yeah, and, I mean that all probably comes from good good dice rolls or bad dice rolls because uh, miss means Vulcan, as was said many many times this weekend by uh, by a certain on Switzerland. So I think I do think with the invention of Vulcan, a crit miss is. I don't even care anymore. Yeah. Unless it's colossal, to be honest. No. With you. So I just uh, want to give uh, congratulations really quick to Lucas and Kevin. They were awesome dudes to ride down with and joke around and pal around with. And they're obviously awesome here players. And I'm pretty glad to call them my friends. And I'm glad they're South Dakota boys just like me. So that was awesome. That's what made me happy this week. I did a whole tournament rundown. Uh, any, Simeon, anything you want to say? No, I wasn't there. I was too busy self quarantining. So. <laughs> Although I wouldn't have gone either way because uh, I've heard that they've got too too big of horses in Oklahoma, and I don't want my toes to get stepped on. I'm a little afraid of that. So, you know, I don't don't know. I this is off. Just whatever. I literally never have any idea what you're ever going to say. I I've done almost a year worth of podcast, if not a year worth of podcast with you. And yet every single time I ever speak to you, I, I can never guess ever what you, what will come out of that, that mouth of yours. I literally have no idea. And like, when I talk, like, I literally have no idea. I, listener, I have no idea. This guy, he just, he's, he's like a loaded gun, but like half the bullets are like cream cheese and like something <laughs> else. And I don't, I don't know. He's got some Lego head bolts. Like I literally have Good. no idea what's gonna come out of this guy's. Eye. I literally My have never green arrows quiver. Am I the boxing yeah, glove arrow? It's, it's, the glue or, arrow? Am I the the breathe I underwater never, arrow? I literally never know. <laughs> uh, borderline like comedic to frustrating. I'm like, what is this person's brain? I can be that way some sometimes, but I feel like eventually. Like, you're like, ah, oh, Calder's probably going to get up in arms about this or say this. I literally have no idea ever. And I've known this guy for, like, three years, two years, whatever, who have known about him or known him. And I have, n- I have no idea what this guy's ever going to say, ever. Um, great. Fantastic. Or right. is there anything we want to say else about? <laughs> no, that was all. Yeah. Rant, rant Just over. My, my big uh, take so, on Oklahoma, yeah. So let's go ahead and get into the news section. I 
don't have it pulled up. Simeon, we had a very interesting piece of news. Do let's let me ask this question. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, this is really important. So something was okay. done. And lead. then uh Calder, do you wanna do you wanna know what was done? What was done, Simeon. So uh the news <laughs> The news this week will not pertain to anyone. Uh, at first, I was going to say it won't pertain to anyone that isn't a competitive player, but now it just pertains to no one at all whatsoever because it was undone as quickly as it was done. The ROC issued a map for nationals. They issued a curated map list ooh ah so this curated map list that does not matter anymore we'll get to that later uh included the batman animated series earth x black panther illuminati x-men animated series fantastic four cosmic clash and then some roc maps now you'll realize if you were listening to that very quick uh, list i won't go into the roc maps uh there's four from 2020 and uh, there was more than that released in 2020. Um, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from 2019. And I think there was 16 released in 2019. And then four from 2018. But you'll re- you'll realize if you were listening to that, uh, there's a DC set missing. There's also a couple Marvel sets missing. There's the indie sets that are missing, which is the Orville and uh, the WWE sets. There's quite a few sets that are missing from this curated map list. Now, why could this be? uh, I mean, why? I don't know. Why would we we, uh, get rid of such maps? Well, Calder, wait till Sunday. Jeez, I tried to... Oh, is it? Is it 3 p.m. Central Standard Time? Then I will tell you why you had to wait till today. I'm undoing this curated map list. Did I just get a notification on my phone that The Rock is live? Yes, we are live and we are here to tell you, never mind. Just never mind. Just never mind. The curated map list is gone for nationals. You might see it again for worlds, but don't worry about it. That'll be a a WizKids official event, I hope. Uh... But yeah, so the news this week was uh, there is no news in a way. Literally, we undid our own news. Um, we released a post, and then less than three days later, we undid our own thing. Isn't that fun that we can do that? I, really, I can't remember what it's called because you know I'm a big stupid idiot. But like, I think there's like a term when you say you're gonna do one thing, and then people kind of like expect it. Ooh, that- yeah. After a while, you say, ah, oh, we're not going to do that thing. Yeah. Maybe only like a week or two before that thing's going to happen. <laughs> wow. Almost like if you sell a certain product or allow a certain product to be won for prizing uh, for years and say, oh, hey, you can, by the way, you can use that uh, for all these cool things. And then say for maybe potentially one of the more important of those cool things, they say you can't use such a product. Like perhaps the the important one that you would want to practice at less important ones with, and especially if you're and very uh, very into this practicing thing, yeah. practice as soon as possible on what products you're actually allowed to use. If you go to the ROC and you listen to boulder. the boulder, if you go to the boulder, the boulder, yeah. yeah, you will hear some new things that are potentially true. Who's to know? Uh, apparently, take backsies are are good to go and michael jackson's not the only one that knows how to moonwalk um so if you watch that video you will notice he does mention some of like the stuff that's going forward with whiz kids uh they are potentially uh not making any more doors and windows maps so that's some actual news for you your spider-man set may have no windows on the maps for it or doors who doesn't love doors? Spider-Man goes in and out of them all the time. Guess what? WizKid says, nope, no more doors. Can't go in and out, Spidey. I would think, honestly. Don't you think he goes out of more windows and doors and swinging around New York City? I honestly never judged the man on how he enters or exits a building. I guess is the correct way to say that. So basically, uh, the one bit of news that you can glean from this whole 
mess of a weekend of news is that uh, we may or may not have any more doors and windows on maps going forward. So isn't that exciting? That's I was just going to be like holes. Yeah, we'll just just a hole that you can go in and out of uh, with your characters or shoot in and out of with your characters. Uh, but no, no uh, other interaction other than, you know, just indoor blocking that ends. It's tough stuff. That's what I got to say. Cool. It's so, real uh, tough stuff. That's news. And, and another word, imagine uh, advertising your national championship tournament with a picture of a chase that is actually not prizing, even though it's the newest and most expensive chase we have right now. Um, it's actually not prizing for the tournament. Another, But, but Calder, like, you could play it, potentially. You could play right, it. Right, right. But, but when you have that, people kind of think it's you can it. That's kind of the whole, like, why else would you have it there? You could you could play a common star lab scientist. Yeah, I have a picture true. of that. <laughs> Just a, sci- a single scientist, yeah. Um, single scientist. Anyways, yeah, I let's, did, let's, you know, I did yeah. I would keep an eye on so, uh, the uh, ROC. Um, I did ask, and uh, apparently they don't have the dial for the lady Phoenix yet. Otherwise they would have shared it. So there's that. I'm curious why we didn't get any other exclusives, why they only have all the older like LEs and stuff for W from WKOs and from last year's worlds. Other than the factory set for first. Yeah. It's all older stuff. They answer any questions about why they didn't get any of the other exclusives that we've actually seen versus the one we didn't even know existed. I think I find that odd to me. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone asked the questions. So some people don't have the, uh, I wasn't there to ask questions. I was there to, uh, make Snyder Snyder later on your, and, uh, yeah. (laughs) Joke about the quality of sound that we were hearing. That was my contribution to the whole thing. I don't know. You're still you, uh, Simeon. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into a value corner. Hey, Michael, look at this. Hero click. $8. That's a good deal. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, this isn't maybe the cheapest value corner in the world, but I think that the value, uh, the, the physical dollars that you'll pay in this time where you don't really need to be paying any physical dollars for hero clicks because uh, you don't really need any physical hero clicks. But if you want to grow your collection, we always do with... Uh, Especially if you want to uh, increase Doug's army, as the Supreme <laughs> HC Realms needs to say, in uh, February 24th of 2020, we need to talk about a seven-year-old figure um, on this modern age piece. Welcome to Doug's army. Scientist, soldier, warrior, keywords. 50 points. Indomitable. Range. Doesn't need it. Only one special power. That's all they need. Got, uh, first, before we get into that, they got two clicks of charge, two clicks of sidestep, two clicks of charge. That's right. Six click long dial. Dial. Vulnerability. Open stuffness. ESD, ESD, ESD. Okay, reducers up front. 11 attack, 11 attack, 10 attack, 10 attack with precision strike. 11 attack with precision strike, and then a 10 attack, nothing. First two clicks, special damage power. Next two clicks in power. Last two clicks, close combat expert. Get a little close combat beast. Already, this style is maybe not quite 50 points on dial alone. Just a little charge piece, three damage. A little, little sidestep, you know, action going on. The sidestep not being paired with a close combat expert. It's a little rough. It's a little rough. But let me tell you about this damage power. This character's got empower. So that's right. It's four clicks of empower, really. Friendly characters that are adjacent. So even if you're just next to this guy or share a keyword with X can remove, can reduce penetrating damage. So this guy is friendly to himself, shares a keyword with himself, always adjacent to himself. So he's always reducing penetrating damage. Hmm. So that 18 of vulnerability, a little bit more. Now, Simeon already knows exactly who this is. Yes. And who is it? This is uh, Captain America. No, uh, this is from the Captain America set. This is the common prime, Josiah X. You guys are thinking, whoa, Prime. I'm like, yeah, it's a Prime. You know what? Deal. Good deal on a Prime. And I think this is one of the best Primes. Really, honestly. He gets to make everybody he shares cured with, no matter where he is on the map, deuce penetrating damage. Now, that is a damage power, and it can be outwitted. 
But if he's all the way in your starting area, who cares? The rest of your team is going, you're like, well, I don't know if I want to pay 50 points for that. Well, push comes to shove. He's still a charge piece. It's got a decent dial length, 50 points. And making the rest of your team not be able to take any penetrating damage. Let me let me do a quick rundown of figures that can do free, free penetrating damage. All right. Give me a torch. I don't like it. To marble. I don't like it. Black Widow bringing out a little crew. Guess what? What? I don't like it. Tri Sentinel? I don't like it. There's a lot of penetrating damage. Valeria Richards? Guess what? What? I don't like it. You know what? They can't do any penetrating damage. They suck to suck. Or they do a penetrating damage in any other way. You're going to reduce it, baby. You got impervious? They do your penetrating damage? Guess what? Reduce it. And you know what? I can roll that sick, sick impervious dice. You ain't. I've been penetrating it, baby. All right? Boom. Annihilated. Droid. Oh, your entire team gets reduced penetrating damage. The higher the point value game, the better he gets. In 300 points, he's already awesome. He's great. Okay? I, I love Josiah X. I think he's a great deal. Now, he is a prime. Tell me, Simeon, what do you think this bad boy is going to cost you? Ooh, six clicks deep. He's a prime. He's common prime. Uh, I'm going to say... I'm going to give him a dollar per click. I'm going to say he's six dollars. Six bucks. You know what? That's not a bad guess for a prime. After all, you get one of these in a brick. Maybe another prime, right? He's it's pretty rare. It's almost as rare as Chase. Josiah X on Cool Stuff Inc. Lowest price on the internet. You can just buy him for anywhere. Especially if you use code DIAL5, 5% off your order. D-I-A-L, all caps, then 5. It's only $2. He's a buck 99. Ooh. They got 12 of this bad boy in stock. Like, what? Dude. Josiah X is all awesome. key Scientist, soldier, and warrior keywords. Um, yeah, I'd have one on deck for any of those theme teams that I'm playing. Because uh, let's say you're running a bunch of new clones and you want that toughness to actually mean something. Uh, you're running... You're running the war machine and you're like man it'd be sweet if my impervious clicks didn't just get psychic blasted for four and i just exploded into war machine parts uh josiah x can hook you up with that absolutely you're running your little red onslaught like, yeah he's cool but he can be tell penetrating damage guess what I've got 11 clicks. Now, this isn't like orange game or whatever, but like, I've got 11 clicks of impervious and invulnerability to try to mow through. Yeah. Obviously, still outwit somebody. You can still pulse wave them. Then, if you just choose a character that, like, your entire team has that, though, it's insane. It's awesome. To be able to reduce everything is great. It gives them all effective invincible if they have a plus two reducer, right? They can still obviously take more to be. It's amazing, especially like shredders. Don't care, like all that stuff. He's awesome. I think he will always be super playable and super usable. Scientist, warrior, and soldier keywords are all awesome keywords. Guess what? Soldier is soon going to be a named theme team. And if you want, if you have Steve Rogers, this guy can be an Avenger or on Shield. Like, dude, he is awesome, and I love him. So Josiah X, only two bucks. Pick yours up today. There's actually only eight of cool stuff, man. Gotta hit that old page refresh. He's selling out quick. Ladies and gentlemen, so go ahead and check them out. That is my value corner, Silver Age, Modern Age. Ooh, it's a Modern Age value corner. Oh, baby. Value yeah. corner, value goodness. I mean, you, uh, you want to go, uh, you wanna go digging? You digger? Somewhat? Go digging, I hear? You know, I do that at work plenty, so uh, why not? We're going to go. We're not going to dig too deep, but uh, we're go looking okay. for okay. a hidden gem. But wait, wow, that looks like a diamond. What do you like to do in hidden gems here, Simeon? What what what, do you, what is a hidden gem for the folks at home? So for me, a hidden gem is a figure that didn't quite make it into the meta. Maybe it's not like something that people really look at. Maybe it was good and sealed, but after that they were like, ah, I can't build with this. It's too hard. Give me something easy to build with. And so I popped back into Avengers Black Panther Illuminati. Ooh, one of the best sets of 2019 by a long shot because there was so much in it that was just so much goodness even if it was like a 035 rare rescue um but that's not the figure that we're talking about today today 
we're talking about number 044. It's a rare. It comes with Bearer of the Power and Time Gems, but it doesn't come with the Time Gem. This is the Namor. So a lot of people will know this figure because it came with the Power Gem. Power Gem's a pretty good gem. I'm not going to get into exactly what the Power Gem does. It's plus one damage, ranged combat, close combat, uh, basically. But this Namor here, he comes in with a 110-point value and a 75-point value. And at a 75-point value, this is where I think he really shines because you play... You play the extra ten or extra five points for the power gem at a seventy-five point value, and you all of a sudden have a ten speed, eleven attack, seventeen defense with invincible, and three damage with a special damage power. And of course, that damage is bumped up by one because of the power gem. So for seventy-five points, you've got someone that can take a hit for he'll reduce anything by three unless it's outwitted well if he takes three damage he goes to click four of this this lower dial i guess technically i should be correct this technically goes to click seven um if you're playing him lower dial on click seven and this is where i really like this guy uh he's got eight speed with flurry 12 attack with an 18 defense and four damage with his Ooh. special damage power uh so he does have an 18 with regen so you're probably not wanting to not wanting to leave him on this but let me tell you a little story calder about how during avengers black panther illuminati sealed i defeated a a little ultra chase thanos who was Mm. 160 points and all i needed was this namor and a single perplex to go with it so this Namor, he has the, the bearer of the power and time gem trait, of course. He also has rule as the world burns trait. When an opposing character rolls for leadership and the result is a one or two, remove an action token from Namor. So you have a chance to keep yourself unactioned if an opposing character is trying the same. He has a speed power in his early dial. That is, you have a, angered the Prince of Atlantis that's charged flurry, but only with the time gem. Uh, of course, the time gem also gives you prob. So, those three powers, pretty good top Good dial. combo with Flurry. Yeah. Or so I hear. Yeah. His bottom dial. And this is... I really like this bottom dial special damage power. He's got it all four clicks of his 75-point line. My Fury is as the Tempest Unleashed. Battle Fury. When Namor attacks with the Power Gem equipped and targets only characters with printed range values of 5 or more, modify his damage plus 1 and the damage dealt is penetrating. So, on his surface, on click 1 of his 75 point dial, he's already doing 4 damage. If you target somebody that has a range value of 5 or more, and uh, just to clue you in that's most generics that's most figures in general that aren't close combat based uh there's like medusa is an outlier with like a two range um there's plenty of zero range people but there's also i think the average is like five or six if they have a range at all this guy is dealing four damage if they have five range or more he's doing five damage top dial and that's penetrating at that point. So at top dial, and he's also got uh, super strength, so you could also pick up an object. Uh, you wouldn't need one at that point, but you could also pick up an object while you're equipped with the power gem and smack him, and it's just penetrating damage. It doesn't require any kind of power to activate, so it just is what it is if it meets the criteria, which is really great on click number four. So on click number four, this is the click that I was on when I beat a full-powered Thanos in one turn. So on click number four, he's a 12 for four with his power gem. So his power gem brings him up to five. Thanos has a range of seven. So I got a six damage, and when I hit, it's penetrating. So Thanos was top dial. He He hadn't outwitted my invincible, so he just hit me for a lot of damage and hit me to that last click. And I managed to swing on him. 
and I have that plus two to my damage, so I was doing six. So that knocks him to click four, because he takes a max of three with his invincible. Well, all of a sudden on click four, he's got impervious. So, of course, with my flurry, I hit him for another six that is also penetrating. And you know what that does to Ultra Chase Thanos? That uh, KOs him. And then I Ooh. took then I took Ooh. some mystics and just died. So, oh, well, yeah, last click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an even trade, but uh, but it is what it is. Uh, this this guy he he's got a lot of versatility. He's got Atlantis Avengers. He's got the Cabal, which grows goes great with the new Fantastic Four stuff we've getting. Uh, Illuminati Invaders Ruler and Warrior. So you can put this guy with a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, he just. An all-around pretty decent 75 points. His dial is a little short. You'll have to be careful around outwit. But when is that not true? Uh, you'll always have to be careful around outwit with a heavy hitter. And he's not even like the highest point value in your team, probably. He's taken up a good old uh, one-fourth of your build for a 300-point team. Okay, pretty respectable, I would say. Pretty respectable. I like a hidden gem now. Normally, we would rank these guys based off uh, gems. What kind of gem do you think this guy is? Do you, do you know any gems off the top of your head, I guess? Ooh. Well, to go along uh, with the power gem, I'll say that this guy's a ruby. Uh, yo, he's, nice. He's prettier than a diamond, uh, but he's no, he's no like amethyst or, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is the okay. Good, what's another good gem? I, I he's know. better than quartz. I by a long shot yeah absolutely slaughters quartz dude artisan well those yeah, that's a uh, hidden gem value corner guys hope you both enjoyed that so let's go ahead and get into the community section there are dozens of us dozens uh, in the community's question we asked you do you want whiskets to bring back con in your store what would you want them to do differently simeon how would you answer this question so i i actually really like some of the responses that we got and I have to agree with some of them. I think that con in your store should be free that like whiz kids could base which stores get which cons on like how much product they sell. I agree that like that makes sense. Whiz kids needs to have like some sort of metric to determine that like it's not just some guy in his basement that's like, I opened a store, give me stuff. I won't sell it for like twice as what it's worth. Um, I understand that. But uh I also think that they've probably got enough backlog of like some of these convention exclusives that they could unload them to like plenty of stores without also hurting the stores by making them hold bad product for a long time. Uh, don't send us your, your lone ranger uh, gravity feeds. Try and make us push those, that kind of thing. So I think it'd go. be I think it'd be a better system than what they currently have. The convention vault is I mean it's worse than the Disney vault. When things go in there they just never come back out. They just never put them up for sale. Uh it's pretty bad. I'll agree. Um I'll say this, I always enjoy the Conyer store stuff. Uh, it was a bit rough that you had to buy really terrible product that no one was buying in the first place to get it. But like I said last week, I don't think there's any modern product that is honestly awful if you at least discounted it a little bit. Uh, even saying the oldest set, which will rotate in a year, uh, has very playable chases, pretty fun primes, really good generics in the term of a g generic ninja, generic suited henchman that can go on every team, and also has objects. So even like the oldest set, Batman the Animated Series, if you didn't get what I was getting at, is a set that I would buy about 20% off or so, if that also meant that I could get some convention exclusives. New ones anyways, not these old ones or anything, but like new convention exclusives. So yeah, I would totally be down for con your store if it was somewhat around those parameters. I only have one on Twitter, so why don't you go ahead and read one on Facebook, I'll read mine, and then you can read another one on Facebook. Sound good, Simeon? Yeah. I'll go with Tiemu, a top fan on Facebook. Uh, he says... I don't think we ever had this in Finland. So actually, having them having them would be a step up. Con LEs would be cool to get in circulation here, both retail stuff and pricing. I guess lower the requirements for local game shops to get them. 
we have one con a year here that has hero click stuff that I know of. That's where Finnish Nationals is held at. More pricing would definitely boost that event too. So yeah, this is also I didn't even think about this until reading this, but uh, a con in your store where they ship out to like local game shops in other countries would be a great way for those countries to get you know conventions that they otherwise would only you know get if they if, like place well or whatever at the really the stuff we kind of take for granted here in America and getting the opportunities we can complain about however long the drive is or whatever but it's not a different country and we also get a lot more normal product too so that's that's a pretty legit yeah and there's there's plenty of countries that play the game and oh, don't Tom, get nationals yeah. Or like support from WizKids. So there's plenty of countries still out there where the only way they get stuff is by buying it from, you know, like us Americans uh, who have all the good stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I can I can imagine that if I had to buy Heroclix only on a like third party market or like a second party like kind of like thing and I was only buying Heroclix from guys on Facebook... Uh, I just, I like going to my game store and picking up boosters and, uh, even like when tri sentinels were in game stores, that's something that like other places just didn't get. Right. Mine on Twitter. We have super fan Christian Bogan saying, I don't think we've, I've ever been at a store that does con your store. However, it's never a bad thing to have the opportunity of getting decent con exclusives from your LGS. So to answer the question, yes, let's bring back con in your store. And that is mine on Twitter. Yeah. I think everyone kind of agreed to a point. Uh, just kind of depended on, like, the, the variance of uh, what the what con in your store meant. Uh, last one on Facebook that I'm going to read is by Tony Canavino. He says, they could run con in your store for a month for local game shops and then sell the items on their site to give boost to the local game shops but still provide the product to those that don't have a local game shop. So basically what he's saying is uh, for like a month, maybe two months, local game shops get product. People come in, they spend money at the local game shop. They maybe buy a booster, maybe like a drink, maybe, you know, some other stuff other than just the con exclusives and they go home. It helps the local game shops out. But then after that like time period, they post the con exclusives on on uh, the the Wiz Kids Convention Vault or the e store or whatever it's called now, they post those up there, and so some guy out in like a town where, like let's say Blake Beald uh, Naberski uh, as like a made up town and state. Uh, oh, Beald Neverhome. Like yeah, that place. <laughs> never doesn't exist. Uh, don't go there for events. Let's say there's some kids out there that uh, they're called the uh, Win a Map Warriors or something, and they they want to buy some of this try. stuff and have didn't it shipped even to them. Try on that one. Wow. That's because okay. no one knows. <laughs> no one knows. Called <laughs> you're the only one. That's uh, true. That's no true. one's gonna Google Win a Map Warriors and find them. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, let's say there's there's some kids that don't have a local game shop and they want to get some of this stuff and not pay an arm and a leg for it. If they could buy directly from WizKids at some point, that'd be great. And also, I mean, WizKids just has to like, sit on all the unsold, unprized out uh, convention exclusive stuff. So it's like, part of me Imagine, always wonders, like, what do they do with that? Well, obviously, uh, Kenny Pena has made a throne out of his phoenixes and other colossal boxes. Oh, yeah, all he the uh, sits, Superman sits primes. Yeah, he just sits on that throne of uh, box convention exclusives, uh, stroking his. I was gonna say beard, but it's not really bearded or anything. He's just kind of like a dude. So yeah, he just sits there. He probably just sits there in the dark and like tries to like look menacingly, like a villain in the story. He's just like yeah, I'm throwing. Oh, he doesn't have to try. He always looks menacing yeah. when I look at him. A Palpatine cloak. It could just be me though. Maybe he just has that look when I look at him. He's like stomach Bruce. every time you look his way. Yeah. Let's get past that. I didn't. I didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't like it. I don't yeah, like anything absolutely. about that whole segment. Yeah, I, didn't like, I didn't like any of that. Uh, and then that's <laughs> that it. All. Yeah, that was it for community. <laughs> it's community Tuesdays, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for sitting through that. I hope you enjoyed that. Moving on, let's go ahead and answer a Malcolm Rush question block. 
That's in Japan. Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. Welcome Russia writes in. He says, answer these questions after you are done with the Batman versus Watchmen uh, Thursday throwdown game. And now that you are finished with non Oreo dial carded sets for a Thursday throwdown, let's ask questions about that. So, yes, some Thursday throwdown questions. That is a... Uh, show we do on our YouTube channel, for those of you that don't know. So go check that out. Each week, we put up something on our Facebook, Twitter, and Discord. Uh, what sets we're gonna, me and Samir are going to build from, you will vote in the comment section. We build teams from those votes, uh, the figures you guys want to see, and then we make them fight in a cool Golden Age brawl. We finished the non-carded sets very early on, because we started from the beginning of Hero Clicks time back in 2002. And we have just now finished with the carded sets that are non-Oreo dials. We actually had to have a tiebreaker because me and Simeon uh, won four games each. So our tiebreaker was Batman Alpha versus Watchmen, the smaller micro sets of that age. And I ended up winning the tiebreaker. So we are finally out of that age. We already filmed our Thursday throwdown for Superman versus Incredible Hulk. And then next week, it is going to be Galactic Guardians, which is my uh, Thursday throwdown. I'm building out of and simul building from chaos war two very good very strong sets at the time for sure so hey. malcolm rush is asking number one best worst and favorite a uh, best worst favorite and surprising on oreo dial carded set simian uh you do the best i do the best worst worst favorite favorite surprising surprising gotcha all right Sound good? so i'm just gonna go by the sets that i played so and it's hard to mm. it's really hard to say like best because we really don't get like a true 100% feel for these sets it's just kind of like you know whatever figures you vote for they might be the best figures out of the set and the rest of the set might be garbage but uh, I think the best set that I played was Brave and the Bold it just had a lot of really good powerhouse and a lot of like really good cheap support and uh, some good in between stuff um, something that like the one figure that was really surprising and did a lot of stuff for me, at least it felt like it, what was the Mademoiselle Marie uh, with her stealth ranged combat expert. And uh, she never got her special attack to go off, but just stealth and ranged combat expert with an eight range for 70 points is uh, pretty crazy. That's pretty cool. Uh, my best, I said, was the Thor set. Oddly enough, uh, lost to Brave and the Bold, but I still would say, objectively, that was probably the best set of uh, non oreo Dial's carded era. Next up is Worst. What do you think the worst was, Simeon? Oh, that's easily the Captain America set. That set was 100% uh, uh, bad. I didn't think there was a single figure in that set that I played that was good. It was all real, real... Uh, what's the word for the th stuff that you throw in the bins? Uh, trash. It was all trash. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, okay. uh, Calder. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, Secret Invasion actually was the worst set. Uh, I remember there being like so much better. Uh, maybe I just didn't play the right stuff, but like I remember there being a lot better scrolls and even like the Super Scroll Illuminati really surprised me with like how just bad he was for 200 points uh 250 <laughs> points he didn't even have indom um yeah. it was just i don't know it just really really kind of i guess it was like a nostalgia set for me it's like something that like i played figures out of but i never played them like competitively so i never really realized that they weren't great i'm gonna say the worst set is going to be batman alpha it's a little too, <laughs> a little too simple, um, and made the tiebreaker a little less interesting. Yeah, uh, for how cool that set was. I'll change my rough. answer to that if uh, if we're including those two sets. Because looking through it, I mean, if you went by the Batman Alpha powers and you can see them, you can see images that have the powers on HC Realms, uh, like Mastermind. You can only be, you can be attacked only once each turn. That's not a bad power. Um, but then you've got GCPD officer for 20 points with a 9 for 2 and no special power, no power at all except oh. bind. You just think all those powers are just for Batman Alpha. Yeah. Oh, so maybe maybe I should let you use Batman Alpha powers. 
it would not have helped me because uh, oh, Outwit becomes they're, they're Outwit becomes terrible. very bad in Batman Alpha Land. You kind of needed Outwit too. Like Outwit leadership, very- leadership would have helped me a lot. Uh, friends, not friendly characters. Friends, two or fewer squares from you get plus two attack. That's pretty good for leadership. Uh, defend is just friends adjacent to you get plus one defense. The wording is so awful. It's it's friends and it's shoot and punch rather than close yeah, and range so and friendly characters. So funny. It's so funny. Shoot and punch. I'm shooting and punching. I'm punching and shooting. Uh, so next up is going to be what was your favorite set you played? Or just favorite set from it, I guess, really. Um. That actually, for me, it was the Captain America set because I didn't own a ton of Captain America. And I I shouldn't have too many answers that are Captain America because that video is lost to time. It and is. We it's only, a little rough. Yeah, yeah we only <laughs> recapped what happened. But uh, figures like Dirk Anger and uh, the shield or the, the wall bounce uh, shield cap, that was pretty good. Um and then, of course, the uh, super rare Squirrel Girl. Uh, I always like like bystander generators. So the set just had a lot of stuff that I was interested in playing, and I got votes for most of it. But uh, there's even more that I didn't. So nice. Uh, we actually have the same vote here. Uh, oddly enough, uh, I also said the Captain America set. So I really enjoyed it. Obviously, yeah, it's lost the time, so I won't talk too much about it. But just Captain America set is one of my favorite sets of all time. I own all of it, and yeah, it's one of my favorites. Next up is Surprising. So this is probably a set that you either played or was totally caught off guard by what was played against you. What was the most surprising set that we played in this age? Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, I want to give it to that. I want to give it to Secret Invasion again because it was surprising how bad it was to me. Uh, I truly did not remember it being as bad as it seemed. Um, but I'll give it I'll give it to Crisis because uh, there was actually like some pretty good combos that I could pull out of Crisis. Um, Uncle Sam being like a real solid piece. Which I knew, I already knew he was, but Uncle Sam having like a real solid list of powers and just like being pretty solid all over, like all around. Uh, I can't remember who else was it that I played from that set. I, I swear, Side I played uh, Uncle Sam. Probably played some figures. Don't don't think I remembered. I want to say I played. Uh, the gorilla guy with the brain, but I don't see him in the set anymore. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. So uncle Sam apparently was the only standout for me. Okay. Well, fantastic. Uh, to me, the most surprising set has to be DC 75th. I, I was really caught off guard. I, I went into web of Spider-Man, you know, a little worried that nightcrawler had me worried. I don't know if it was your dice rolls or what it was, but, uh, DC 75th was great. Ice really pulled through some crazy shenanigans. Beast Boy was a lot more fun to play than I thought he was going to be. And I just overall, I really enjoyed DC 75th. Yeah, it was awesome. So that takes away from the first question. Ah, just because he lost, baby. Uh, next up, number two. Uh, what did you learn about these non Oreo Dial carded sets since you started playing Thursday Throwdown games? Uh, sp- Special powers from these sets specifically, special powers don't necessarily, especially in Golden Age, don't necessarily make a figure good. Um, Mm. Super Scroll Mm. Illuminati, he's got a trait, and he's got four special powers throughout his dial, and he is not worth 250 points. He is pretty bad, even in Golden Age. Um, Even in, like, playing comparable sets. Uh, damage dealt to him is reduced by one. I think I crit missed off of that. And then Calder just had to like psychic blast me off of invulnerability or something. I don't remember. Yeah, that, was, that was rough, man. It was, it was bad though. And then, uh, oh, I, but I don't know. I did something to you and it sucked. And it yeah. Like, uh, is, uh, then I've got like perplexed by plus or plus two or minus two on my own combat values, which is like, why would I ever want to decrease my own combat values by two unless I'm like pulse waving. But even then it's like, why, why would I ever do this? I suppose it does. Indeed. Sock to sock. 
Huh? Yeah. That's the way it be sometimes. All right. Uh, for me, uh, the dials did get a little bit shorter than the non-carded era. But um, I would say overall, not all of them are necessarily more playable. Special powers, like I said, with Simeon, don't make it more playable. But some of them are still playable in modern age, I would say. And I'll stand by that. There's, I would say there's at least one figure in every set that is playable in modern age. Yeah, that's fair enough. At the very least. Definitely Which may not be like... Some sets, you know, Enerso characters are pretty usable in modern age, honestly. And you might have to build around them a bit, too, but... Build around them a bit, but even, like, cheap ones. Like, yeah, sure, I can throw on a Guardsman, I guess. 32 points, he's flight, he's got shields. Like, he's not the best police generic, but he's a police with flight, which is pretty cool. You know, stuff like that type of deal. You know, if you want to... I think Shang-Chi, just to, just to look at this Avenger set specifically, he's still pretty good, in my opinion. So, there are... I, I still... And that Scarlet Witch, the Super Scarlet Witch is awesome. She's still the cheapest Avengers prop to this day. And that is awesome. That's really dope, really. So, just looking at Avengers, I'm seeing a ton of care, uh, Quite a few characters... Not a ton, but quite a few characters that I would still use to this day. So, there's definitely... You know, if you play Golden Age, and I love playing Golden Age, don't feel bad to, like, look through some of these sets... And there are characters that haven't been clicked uh, since these sets have come out. So even then, these might be the only version of the character. So that's pretty cool. Number, or sorry, question number three. Uh, which of these figures you didn't play in your Thursday Throwdown games that you wish you had a chance to play instead? So figure, uh, Simi, go ahead and name a few figures that you wish you would have played instead of the ones you did play. Um, so I'll go from go ahead, Batman Alpha. Secret. Oh, Batman Alpha, okay. Yeah, so from Batman Alpha, I'm going to say um, I really I did get a vote for Killer Croc. I really wish I had played him. Um, I got a vote for Bane. I'm still not sure if Bane was going to be worth the 70 points, but I wish I had played him. Um, really, I wish I hadn't played the set at all. But also uh, the 30-point Batgirl, who's six clicks deep. So, five points per click. She does have willpower, which is surprising in this set. She's only a 9 for 2 most of her dial, uh, or a 9 for 1. So, she's not great, but, I mean, still, she's something for 30 Good points. points. Yeah, 30 points. Uh, what would you have played, if you could go back in time and be like, you chose Batman Alpha, what would you have went with instead? For the sets to choose from. Um, oh, instead of Batman Alpha, what set? Batman Alpha. The only real choices were like uh, classic, Dave in the Bowl, or sorry, Blackest Night plus Brightest, Brightest Day. Day. Yeah, that probably Brightest would have been Day. a better option for me. Uh, the Jonah Hex set is not any better. No, uh, no. But of course, the Green Lantern set was also available to you. Twenty ninety nine. Well. I could have gone it's not with like carded. the not carded, not carded, oh. not carded. Not carded. Then no, not carded. there was nothing. <laughs> Well, you could have done Brightest Day and Blackest Night. We were going to bundle those two together. I think that would have been an okay pick. Yeah, you. that would have been probably more comparable. Yeah. For me, I guess I, I wish I would have been able to play the Fast Forces comedian figure. I really like, really like that comedian. He's just really cool. Uh, he just has better stats. The main set one, the running shot, 11 attack, 3 damage, solid. Uh, he moves on to some like charge blades, some range combat expert in the middle of his dial. I just really like his dial for sure for seven uh, seven clicks long for hundred points. Also, kind of wished um, anything else in giant size X Men. <laughs> didn't really, didn't really like, didn't really like the giant size X Men game that we played. Didn't care for it. Didn't care for it at all. That's yep. fair. Yeah, giant size X Men for... is probably one of the few X Men sets I really. Yeah. Other than like some just, of the, like, the dual like figs, that. it's hard to really like the set. Number four, out of all the non Oriodal carded sets in Thursday Throwdown games, uh, what was the most fun to play? So, your most fun to play carded set in this era here? Oh, it was, again, it sucks, but it was the, the one that we lost the, the Captain America versus Giant Size X Men set. Um, oh, you're looking at the most fun game dang yeah, yeah wow it was really it was a super bad. fun game and it's it was a fun game yeah um and it wasn't really like one-sided too much 
uh, Calder just missed all of his rollouts the entire game. So it wasn't so like much roll like one sided uh, as it was just like it was really fun up until we realized it hadn't recorded at all. Then it got dark. That was uh, that was rough. Uh, I still have flashbacks. My favorite game was probably the first one we played, which was Avengers versus Justice League, which is our longest game in this era. It took us two hours and what? Two hours, 13 minutes, two hours, 14 minutes, really, to play through that game. It it was wild. And so that was uh, that was two months ago when we played uh, and entered this era of play. But Justice League versus Avengers was amazing because it came down to just Doomsday. And uh, he pulled out that sweet, sweet W. And boy, was I, boy, was I happy about that. Hmm. Five. I really like Two Gun Kid from that one. Yeah, it was fun too. You got to do a uh, little gun, gun, gun fan play. fire, fanfare, fan, fanfare, fanfire. Yeah, number five. Which non Oreo dial set figures could still compete within today's? I, mean, I chose a couple of figures, I guess, that could compete within today's. Uh, uh, I'll throw out. I'll throw out. Competitively or not, um, Dirk whatever. Anger is still real solid for 71 points. He's just like a support kind of thing, but for 71 points and his soldier keyword, um, you can build something out of that. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know because, uh, other than like the more support kind of figures, most of the stuff that I've ran is either, I think like overcosted. I guess two gun kid, which we were just talking about, but for 50 points, He's got six clicks deep dial, and like, sure, his defense isn't great, but he's got some damage output. And uh, also, um, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam also has a pretty solid dial for his points. Okay, so now I'll see figures that are actually good. Uh, in <laughs> I think Smoky Foot Cap is solid. Uh, he didn't do the best in our game, but I think if you kind of build for him, he's really, really good. I think the Dr. Manhattan I didn't play, the 276 uh, 005 Dr. Manhattan is also really good, especially compared with Josiah X. Uh, when you're paid, paired with him on a scientist team team and he can reduce penetrating when he has impervious for the first seven clicks of his dial, it's pretty awesome. So, and he's also protected out wit. So only pulse wave can get through this dude's impervious, which is great. So I think that Dr. Manhattan is really good. I also think the, I already said it before, but that Scarlet Witch, the super rare from Avengers, is still the cheapest Avengers prob. And if you push her, she can go to Barrier. So she's an Avengers Barrier prob, which is amazing. So yeah, I think there's a lot of, a lot of playable figures. And that was Malcolm Rush's question block. Let's go ahead and move into a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Uh, so let's talk about Professor X from XDPS 035, super rare from the set. His influence tokens aren't capped, so pack a battery for him. My choice is the Days of Future Past, more Moira, Moira, McTaggart, and there's plenty in modern. Secondly, influence friendlies to keep freeing up tokens with distanced leadership. Abuse that colossal stamina. So go take a look at Professor X and really abuse the fact that you don't have to cap his influence tokens. Same yeah. thing with characters like Lex Luthor. You can get up to four cake tokens. That's when you can start using them. But his cake tokens aren't capped at four. Also, so by all means, you only need them to cake get up to four once. Once you get up to four once, you can use them right you away. Roll a 10. For the rest of the game. Use them right away. Then you make it roll a 10. And guess what? That character rolled a 10. So you give him a cake token. It's pretty awesome. So keep in mind, tokens like that, Lex Luthor's influence, or sorry, Lex Luthor's cake tokens and Professor X's influence tokens. They don't say they have a cap. Like, if it's not based off of a stat modification, then obviously their cap is, like, three. Um, then I mean, to keep stacking them tokens. Tokens don't have a stack, baby. So keep stacking them. I'm going to go ahead and get into another listener question, which is from Vigilante Tiemu in our Discord server. He goes ahead, and he writes... Awkward silence as I click to it. These kids really botched the dial for the Dota 2 starter, which is unfortunate since I got it from my brother who plays Dota 2 as a birthday, as a birthday present, and proceeded to whoop him with Deadpool sets, Thunderbolts, Fast Forces. On modern dials, not matching up with modern dial design is fine, as long as the set itself is playable within itself. 
Florida 2 only had one team, so mirror matches or multiverse games were the only options. So, goes ahead and says, this is a long-winded way to ask, what is a non-Marvel or DC set WizKids made you think WizKids botched and why? And for some positivity, what was one they got right? So, Jimmy, I'm going to go to Tyler Dota 2 really quickly. Um, it is the only Valve property to get a hero click set and valve is one of my all-time favorite video game publishers even if they don't care about their own video games that's fine it's whatever it's the way it is uh but honestly so my favorite value 120 men oh she started this already they're just sorry uh but you're correct in where i'm going with this <laughs> my favorite valve game is team fortress 2 and to be honest with you if they made a starter set of five figures and just didn't leave out the engineer Right, didn't at least leave out my favorite character, but if they'd probably at least give us the soldier, the demo man, the heavy, you know, my favorite characters in the game. They would have made a starter set, and even if the dials were trash, absolute garbage, I would still be happy that they existed, honestly. And if they made a, a map, which Dota 2 did make a map, and it was a huge map, so it was a new huge map, in a time where the last huge map we hadn't gotten in a while, this is a four-player starter map, you know, it's cool. Um, I'd be okay with that as well, even though TF2 only has two teams, so it only needs two. But to have a Team Fortress 2 style and looking map, I'd have been like, that's awesome. Like, if we look at Faceless Void, he's absolute garbage for 125 points. He's total <laughs> trash. Yeah. He's so bad. He's so terrible. For 125 points, your top dial defense is a 17 with super senses. You have no indom. You have six clicks of life. Uh, you, have, you, know, you have 10 charge, 11 attack, 2 damage. He's garbage. He's a 50-point character masquerading himself as a 125-point character. But his sculpt is awesome. All these sculpts, really cool. So you, at the very least, got really nice shelf pieces. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think what I'm trying to say here is, if they would have made the one Valve game I care about, add for a while that the figures were trash, I would still play them a lot, and I would play them in Golden with like resources and stuff to try to make them good just because I love those characters. If they would have made Team Fortress 2, and obviously Dota has more than five people, TF2 has more than five people, I would have loved, loved for it to exist. Uh, TF2 did get a WizKids product, and it was chess. It was a chess game. It was yeah. chess. <laughs> chess, guys. Chess. And I spent $125 for that chess set. Chess. Goodness gracious, chess. So I would have killed. Killed for it to be hero clicks instead. Whiz kids made chess. All right. That's the but okay, I guess the set I thought they botched was Street Fighter. Also as a Street Fighter uh, fan. Sure. I think the figures were, were crazy, Sculpts crazy. Sculpts are great. Sculpts are also great. You know what? I have a lot of Street Fighter figures just for the sculpts. Yeah. Sadly, quite a few of them have broken. Uh, which is a little rough, and they're really hard to glue because of how dynamic the sculpts actually were. So, but yeah. they're still really, really cool sculpts. At the end of the day, I own all my favorite Street Fighter characters because they're cool shelf pieces to look at. But that is definitely one that they botched. That's a non-Marvel or DC set. So, man, sorry for the long-winded answer. Go ahead. All right, a set that I think that they really botched, and I think that they could even redo in a better light so you know calder you know how they did that one set that was like it was like a fast force of giants it was like uh giant lady giant boy uh dc giant guy adam man big guy it was like a giant pack right you remember that yeah sort of sort of not really a little bit little yeah, it was like, man, big guy it was yeah. from a while ago um here's some giants that they could have put in like a starter set or just their own kind of thing gypsy danger striper striker eureka cherno alpha crimson typhoon knife head slattern raiju scunner leatherback the, the like the movie pacific rim is what i'm talking about where it's giant robots fighting giant monsters and they're on they're all on one by one bases, single base figures yeah, with was... the colossal uh symbol on damage, of course. None of these guys are longer than eleven clicks. Um of course, I mean I think 
It's Slattern. If you play him, he like comes back to life, so you get more than eleven clicks. But man, what a what a missed opportunity when you could have made these like bigger sculpts and you could have marketed them as just small statuettes. You could have like because they only made ten figures for this whole set. Uh, yeah. You could have made a ten figure like starter and. If they were all two by twos, you could have listed it for like a hundred bucks. I don't know, something crazy. And for ten like small statuettes, that wouldn't have been that crazy. People that don't even play the game could have picked them up for that much money. Um, I don't know if it actually would have cost that much or not, but what we got instead was uh, a bunch of like half baked single base figs that should be giant, but. Uh, they're like on average they're the same size as the wwe figures now so if i ever want to take on knife head and give him the old three amigos from eddie guerrero i can do that uh you should give the uh, three amigos to the um uh the dude that it's like the this also three flurries whatever his name oh is. yeah uh that is Cherno, Cherno Alf. no it's, crimson no, typhoon. it's crimson yeah crimson typhoon, typhoon the three yeah. the three brothers three armed yeah. assault yeah I could do that. Baby. And like the other thing is like all of these figures are great in their own set if you want to play them against each other. If you want to do uh if you want to do like the humans versus kaiju or whatever, the robots versus yeah. kaiju thing, they're great for that. As soon as you Maybe. take these figures out of the set, Slattern for 600 points. Look at his dial and tell me that's worth 600 points. That's so bad for 600 points. The new Galactus is only 150 wow. more. Wow, uh, he's he's got like the stats top dial. Point of defense, though. Yeah, but look at look bottom dial yeah. and justify the bottom dial because yeah, you can always justify a click one. Point character can be a nine. Three clicks of their life, they have a nine attack with sixteen defense. Yeah, hundred points. Even if they have better mystics, which is still unavoidable or whatever. Yeah, that's the one great thing about this set too is in Golden Age you can still play a kaiju figure. Ooh. Uh, oh my so you could play. So, you could play like his top dial. Sorry, let me just do this quick. His top dial's six hundred points. Yeah, two clicks less. He's half the points. You're paying three hundred points for two clicks of a twenty defense, a click for a thirteen attack, and a click for a twelve attack. Well, you also charge. You also lose of one of the traits. Hypersonic speed. You also lose. One, oh, okay. So well, you but you dude, lose still. biggest baddest monster to ever walk the earth. Once per game, when Slattern would be KO'd, instead heal it to its starting line, roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled, and subtract one, deal it the result as unavoidable damage. I don't and know then, if that's worth 300 points. Yeah, I, worth well, yeah I mean, points. but that's that's what like the 300-point dial is for. Is yeah, okay. You basically you. You. have the potential of having, like, if you roll real well, if you roll real good, you have, like, a 22-click figure for 600 points, which is still bad well okay now we're gonna talk about a set a <laughs> a set we, we think they didn't botch to me uh the one they got right that is a non-marvel non-dc set honestly i enjoyed the kick butt two set. uh it had only characters that start in the movie and was missing a few of them but within itself it's a pretty fun set to play as well as a couple of figures aren't terrible outside of it. I think maybe Chase Choice, just being a Dave Lazuski, is a little rough, just the version of him in Big Daddy's armor. But the Fast Forces is fun. The main set is fun. The uh, Chris D'Amico and the Mother Russia are both really solid figures. And some of the lower point ones, you know, Black Death for 35 points isn't awful. You would have had Plasticity stop top dial. It would have been a bit better. But like in itself, it's a pretty fun set. You can make a bad guys team. Obviously, they couldn't do the name that they actually call themselves in the movie. Yikes. And you can make a pretty fun Justice Forever team that has all the characters on it. The points will work out, which is which is fun. And then I also thought, obviously, this is the obvious one, but WWE, yeah. even though a lot of them are really basic, just kind of okay close combat pieces, a lot of them can also, in a casual setting, go toe-to-toe with most modern stuff. Because their trait is, or sorry, their trait, their team ability is very strong. So that's all I'm going to say about uh, yeah. sets they got right. 
I think WWE is the best example of like what they should do going forward because not only does it like behave differently when you're only playing WWE versus WWE, it also can translate to the actual game so and and still compete. So it's not only good in just its own set for someone that just wants to pick up WWE figures and only play that. It's also something where if you pick up WWE as like a casual guy and then you're like, well, I'd like to try like a tournament, you're not completely hosed by like that being what you own. Whereas like other smaller like uh, titles like Turtles wasn't usually like great outside of like, you know, certain chases and stuff like certain figures. Uh, WWE as a whole is like fairly good. Uh, the other set that I decided to go with that I think they did real well, and this is for a similar reason, because they gave WWE a team ability that made it really well rounded, and uh, they protected it from stuff that they knew it was going to be like limited against. And this is the Halo set. So mm. the Halo set, if you don't know, had a real cool mechanic called Grenade Pool. And uh, not like Deadpool thing. The Grenade Pool was just like kind of kind of like a title character thing where you started off with a certain amount of grenades in your grenade pool and if you had grenades you had this trait that was throw a grenade you could either choose depending on the character you might have like the frag grenade you might have the plasma grenade uh, if you've played halo you know which grenades there are there's thermite grenades uh, I think there's like a flashbang on one of these characters, but I can't remember. Um, but basically, it was just, yeah, flashbang, no damage. Um, it was just like an interesting little mechanic that these characters that uh, weren't like super great, like um, the Flood was like actually one of the ones that I collected all of them. I collected multiples of all the Flood. Uh, none of these characters were super powerful outside of this own like little set. Uh, the range was pretty low on most of them. The the figures with like the beam rifle had like nine, ten range or something like that, and uh, some of the chases had really good stats. Or no, I guess the chases that I'm thinking of, there was a multi attack Master Chief and Arbiter, and then there was the Master Chief with the Ghost. That was the only figure in the whole set that had hypersonic. So inside of the sealed, the hypersonic ghost like chase was pretty solid but um the, the way the grenade worked is you would choose a type of grenade listed on the card you would choose a target square within five squares and line of fire and you ignored characters uh occupying or adjacent to the target square and then you would deal damage to each character hit based on the type of grenade chosen and then so for example, the thermite grenade destroys up to three squares of blocking terrain or walls adjacent to the target square. The flashbang, uh, the target square of this grenade can be within eight squares. Place an action token on all hit characters that have zero tokens. And uh, let's see, the frag grenade was a hit character in the target square is dealt one additional damage. Each other hit character is knocked back from the target square. And then plasma was no damage. Mark a hit character in the target square at the beginning of your next turn. Deal two damage to the character marked in this way and one damage to all adjacent characters. So there were each like these unique little things that you didn't have on every single character. Not every character had grenades and not every character with grenades had the same grenades as other characters. But it was a fun mechanic that was different enough and uh, it also, at the time, there wasn't a lot of stuff to get around stealth. Um, so it was like one of those like weird things that you could throw a grenade and like attack someone in stealth with it. And it was just, I really liked it. Nice. And those are all the questions we have. So thank you guys so much for writing in. We had questions on our Discord and um, Facebook. So you guys can also write in questions. You can send them in on Facebook, Twitter, and the private messages. You can send them to our email at dial h for hero click at gmail.com. Dial for hero clicks. Excuse me, hero click. It's gracious. Just one, just one hero. And like, click. yeah, just just one hero click. It's CK. No, it's an X. And of course, check out our YouTube channel for unboxings. I I personally think top ten videos, unboxing videos. What I think they're all pretty boring. And even then, just like recording matches, I find that really boring. It's what's probably the most popular 
but I enjoy the fun videos we make, like our Thursday Throwdown stuff. And that's why, because I think unboxings are kind of lame. Um, I like to do a little fun skit in the beginning of them. So hopefully you guys think that's fun. I did that for the Black Widow set and for the uh, Fantastic Four set. So hopefully you guys thought that was fun. And of course, uh, support us on Patreon if you so choose. We gave away a brick, a contents of a brick. Fifth place got commons, fourth uncommons, third rares, four, uh, second super rares. And the first would have gotten the chase if I would have pulled the chase. Uh, but I pulled primes and then I bought a few extra boosters and I added another prime to the pool. I don't know what we're giving away in August. Probably something really cool. But that giveaway happened and those guys will be getting their stuff tomorrow. Well, when you hear it, it's gonna, it's, it's already happened. Time is my, I'm already in control of time. It doesn't matter. So yeah, go ahead and check us out on Patreon if you guys want to support the show and if you like what we do. I want to add some more tiers. I need to make a few more designs for tokens, t-shirts, things like that. Um, but definitely support us if you guys want to. And just by listening and watching, like if you guys go and watch our YouTube channel and subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, that's also huge, huge support. And just by listening, you guys are supporting enough. So thank you guys so much for listening. And that's everything I have to say. Simeon? Yes. Okay, good. I didn't really care what you had to say. <laughs> Anyways, I hate speaking with you. Honestly, I'm so done. I, I got to go. No, you want to go ahead and say anything before we go and you read us out of here? Uh, I'm just going to say that um, I'm super excited. It's all locked in, so this won't affect anyone that's listening. You won't be able to sign up, but I'm super excited for uh, this uh, Dish Up Clicks uh, charity tournament that's going on. Yeah. I'm, I'm signed up. I'm assuming I'll be knocked out in like round one or two. Uh, not, not really hoping high for it. Uh, I'm running a Fantastic Four theme team, so that's, uh, you know, you get what you get. Yeah, what do I expect? So, um, I'm excited for it. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun for me to run some new stuff and uh, see how bad the meta has gotten. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But uh, that's what I'm excited for in this next weekend coming up. So, uh, with that, uh, Dial H for HeroClix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day including the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. So you should check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. <laughs>